about like trying other things around i i know you you have a, a lot of experience with uh, product management that is something highly unlikely definitely at this age uh, and doing a phd uh, phd uh, in in parallel to that and to to me my understanding was definitely academic research is definitely not intersection with the product management to me it was more like only if you only if you transition to a senior position where you know the company around you know all the technologies you are using and then then only uh, you can really uh, be sufficient enough to be a product management so i want to learn more about what is product management according to you in a much more student friendly manner like mm-hmm. what what does it really entail what, what does product management really entail and how did you build up your skills or expertise for uh, getting at least showcasing your skills that hey i am i'm good enough person for product management i'm i'm technically sound but i can also contribute to the design of a product can you talk more about that absolutely so i actually fell into product management before even thinking about research and um uh machine learning actually even so uh i uh so latin actually is kind of a constraint satisfaction problem it's a very logical language it's like a puzzle um and what else is a constraint satisfaction problem is time management and kind of breaking things up into different components and figuring out um different how different people operate and what they uh, are motivated by and also what kind of tasks they like to work on and so product management is lar- a large part is um figuring out you know what type of work needs to be done and how to break that up and how to allocate that and who to allocate that to and i just like love that almost bipartite graph matching problem it's just so fun with and with humans and you get to interact with all sorts of different types of people which i love um i think the other side of it is understanding the user um which i i think i mentioned a little bit before about not making anyone feel stupid so that that requires understanding the person who's going to be using your technology and um uh which at a uh, at a company is often the customer your user um and i love thinking about that too because i want to think about you know how would this person engage with this maybe not an expert maybe maybe someone who's thinking about xyz or who wants to get abc done and so um that's also a part of the product management role and i would say the last part that i think about with the product management role is it depends on the company you're at but it also sometimes entails kind of protecting your team and creating that kind of team um a bonding experience and so i i really like that aspect as well um and bringing people together getting them motivated to do stuff doing something fun engaging and rewarding um are all components of it and so i fell into product management first out of college since it was my favorite job uh that i in, i did an internship at i did i did software engineering i did like finance consulting stuff i didn't really actually enjoy them as much <laughs> but i love product management i thought it was exactly how my head already worked um so i fell into that but then i felt like i wanted to get a little bit more technical and i think that's what brought me into the phd program i also really want to start my own company at some point and i realized there were some really smart people there in the program and i wanted to get to know them <laughs> um for potentially you know something i heard google came out of stanford phd so why not give that a go um and i learned about machine learning there i actually have never taken a machine learning course <laughs> official course um, so don't feel like okay. you have to but i've i i have listened to some of andrew's um lectures uh so yeah there's just everything i've most everything i've learned has either been completely publicly available online or from talking or from being very fortunate to be surrounded by cool people and jam with them on different topics and learn from them yeah definitely i i i don't know how i can uh, express this but i relate to you on a much more like many levels that you just said over there many of the things that you just <laughs> mentioned and i guess you are the only person who would actually be a testament that okay this is really possible because for me yes i still do i i before this at least checking out your profile i still thought that product management was something really like you can either start from a very small company who who desperately needs a person who can understand these things around but i guess you working at google and other companies I haven't seen that they are like pro ML companies so they are definitely 
are digging your profile they they are liking what whatever you did so and of course starting like working at a startup and um at least thinking about uh, starting your own idea is definitely one thing i'm um, even i'm looking uh, forward to so definitely thanks a lot for at least uh, being a player in that but um talking a, a, a bit more detail i i swear i won't uh, dig you more deep on that is but how would you how would you say one can really build up a profile regardless of a phd student or a software development engineer yeah. how can one really build a profile for product management like i mean what is the ideal expectation and i don't know i, I don't want to talk along the lines like, like how to crack those interviews but can you talk more about like what do they really want to see in you like what are the what are the abcs of a product management role yeah so um i think the best way to get exposure i think the first first thing is like figure out if this is something you want to do um and the way to kind of figure that out i think the easiest two ways are one is get some kind of internship in product management at a bigger company it's going to have a different flavor of product management than a small company but it'll give you a sense of the some day-to-day activities uh and if you like that continue on doing that at that company or it'll be much easier to move after you have one of those um and don't always you don't always have to do it at google like you could you could go somewhere like quote unquote lower tier whatever it doesn't matter like the point is to get you to figure out if this is a good fit for you if you like it if you like it you can always um advance and then i think the second thing that you could do um pretty easily uh is to either start a company or join a small company and become that product person and so there are materials out there to read up on what a product person should do but really it is about thinking about your user and designing and figuring out what you need to build for that product and easily allocating those jobs to um the engineering team for example or interfacing with marketing and all this other stuff and just being able and willing to wear a lot of hats at that company and be very helpful um i think of product management as i think someone said this once like as oiling the wheels of a car so you're not actually you shouldn't think of yourself as essential because the rest of the team is essential they're doing like work they're writing code they're committing it yeah. it's pushed <laughs> it goes into production you what are you doing you're just oiling uh those wheels but just like you got to be really good at oiling those wheels to stay otherwise you will probably be the first person to be cut so it's kind of like doing the things in the cracks and being willing to do um things that might not be super glamorous Hmm, that's that's really interesting and would you would you happen to have any insights of the key differences between these roles like i know you are you have juggled a lot bit around what software development can really provide i mean you are right now an academic researcher at a very uh, very elite uh, university and working on some very nice problems on the other hand you have also tried your hands on teaching definitely coursera like i'm i'm sure like definitely teaching assistant and something would have also been there along the lines but uh you have also tried software engineering as an intern at some places product management what were the like if you if you could summarize few lines like what what are the things that you might have learned along those lines how how does the uh, applications differ how how the technical role how how the technicality in these roles differ oh yeah absolutely so i think of software engineering as um kind of really interesting puzzles that you're solving all the time um and so you're given you know maybe potential input and output but you have to figure out the most efficient way given your knowledge of uh it could be you know in machine learning or it could be even broader systems level things and that that can get really interesting you're like oh i understand cash works this way blah blah and so um i think like it's on it's solving those problems um that you find really interesting and that should gravitate you towards the that that area like architecting those kind of things Um I think software engineering of course uh has not only that role there but also you could become you know an engineering manager people often like to think about engineering problems but uh, also want to be able to manage people and that is a very open opportunity in fact I think there aren't enough of those people who are good at both and then um product management I would say is you're a little bit more divorced from the um coding aspect of things and it's less about that type of problem solving um kind of with a computer it's more with humans with other human beings and a little bit of more negotiation there uh so i think there's a little bit of that and um 
your the way you test things is a little bit different. You're testing with users as opposed to you know running internal tests to see uh, what like profiling your code, like figuring out if it passed all these unit tests, and it's a little bit different there. And then I think research, um, you are not thinking as much about unit tests, I think, um, <laughs> or reliability. You are just going as fast as you can in one direction, um, and uh, hopefully writing kind of clean code around along the way, but definitely towards a deadline, I can't guarantee anything. Um, uh, but uh, a second on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think with research, it's thinking about kind of, oh, given the state of the world right now of where of our knowledge, what is um, that plus one step, but also what is that like 10x step and where, like, where do we, like, where can we uh, push this frontier. And so you're always thinking about what that frontier is and where do you push on it in all different types of ways. And I think that is different from kind of a startup co-founder because a startup co-founder is pushing in exactly one direction almost all the time and very focused. And I think with research, it almost is useful to be a little more scattered because um, that way you're you're tying in this and this, this and that, and then that and this and all over the place. And you can eventually form a cohesive thing, but you are thinking a little bit more, um, thinking a little bit more broadly. Um, so I, yeah, that would be my takes on those, those roles. <laughs> <laughs>